Hello again everyone, we're back with more Final Fantasy VIII fun on the Best Retro Games channel. Just chilling, playing old games on old gear. Uh, PlayStation 1 original hardware, playing the original Final Fantasy VIII that I bought as a kid on four CD discs and having a whale of a time with it. We are about to go to the Fire Cavern to take our prerequisite uh, test for the seed exam. So here we go. Lovely, lovely artwork. Okay, junctioning magic, says Quistis. Now pay attention. I'll be explaining how to utilize the magic you have stopped. Um, again, we've done this already, so we'll whip through this. Junctioning magic. Uh, by junctioning magic, you can raise the character's stats. If the GF has learned the ability, Guardian Force, to junction onto stats, that particular stat will be displayed in white. By selecting junction here, the GF and magic commands will appear. You are able to junction magic by selecting magic. When magic is selected, a list of magic appears. Use the cursor to select which stat to junction. When strength is selected, choose the magic with the cursor. You can see how the stat value changes with each magic. When a magic is selected, the magic will be displayed next to the stat and the value will change. Only one magic can be assigned to each stat. However, there is no need to junction magic manually one by one. Select Auto after junctioning. Auto junctions magic automatically. There are three commands to choose from. Attack favors strength. Magic favors magic. Defense favors raising HP. Thus, magic can be junctioned easily by using Auto. For example, let's set the attack junction magic has been junctioned to favour strength. This concludes the Magic Junction tutorial. Thank you, Quistis. When you draw a new magic, try experimenting with it when you junction. This is how you become stronger. Righty-ho. Off we go. Okay, ready to go? Quistis. Oh, she's remembered something. You know how to use your gun blade. I guess I'll review it. I already know. I, I think literally this is just press R1 when you hit stuff, but I guess I'll review it. It's better to go over it. The status screen displays each character's basic data. The first status screen shows stats such as HP, strength, etc. The second screen shows all the status and elemental related information. The third status screen shows GF related information. The fourth status screen shows limit break information. Oh, I see. Squall's gunblade settings can be changed in the limit break screen. There are two settings. Gunblade auto, Renzo Kuken indicator. If you select gunblade auto to on, Renzo Kuken hits automatically without having to press R1. So this is the sort of, you know, the boost. Um, but also Renzo Kuken, I think, is the name of Squall's limit break, desperate, last ditch attack when he's running out of HP. However, a perfect may, be, may not be possible with this option. You must select off. Yeah, so you can choose to have it do it for you and then you lose the sort of best possible win and press R1 manually at the right time. Yeah, okay, cool. If the Renzo Kuken indicator is turned off, the indicator will not be displayed during Renzo Kuken. If the Gunblade Auto option is turned on, the Renzo, this is so boring, is turned off automatically. Fine. I'm just going to leave it as it is because I think it's fun to do the pressing R1 yourself. Cool. Ready then everyone? We're going to approach the Fire Cavern. Are we ready? Have we junctioned all our magic and stuff? I think we're as good as we are going to get for now. Um, I could go out and um, 
do some sort of grinding against the monsters on the world map and collect a bit more magic and stuff. But I think we're just going to play it as we see it for now and um, see how it goes in the old fire cavern. I remember it being not actually very difficult, but there's like a time limit that you can choose. And the lower the limit you choose, the better seed score you get you know, later when you join the um, paramilitaries. Um, so, the objective, say these guys, is to obtain a low-level GF. A seed member must support. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think we're ready. Give or take. I'm ready. Quistis, I'm his support. So she's a seed member. Instructor number 14, Quistis Trep. Select a time limit. Choose one suited to your abilities. Challenging yet reasonable. Yeah, so this is... You have to um, choose how long you're going to give yourself. And the, the lower a time limit you choose, the higher rank you get in seed when you uh, pass the exam later. But um, it doesn't really matter. And the only difference it makes is how much uh, your salary is. So I think we're going to choose something somewhat reasonable. I would normally choose 10 minutes because I would normally have been out grinding, but let's choose 20 minutes? I think we can do it. I may have to rush as we go in and try and concentrate on talking and playing at the same time. It's very challenging. Oh look, the clock's running already. Hurry, hurry. Very stressful. And it also, it keeps running when it's loading, so I've already lost more than 10 seconds. My job is to support you in battle. Everything else is up to you. Fine. No worries, Quisty. You know, the boys often choke on this test when I come with them. I guess my charm makes them nervous. Flirting. Teacher flirting already. I'm just kidding, trying to keep you relaxed, that's all. Outrageous. We find out later that she's only like a year older than Squall. It's ridiculous. This whole school is a bit bizarre. Oh, look, a battle. Random encounter battle again. I wonder what it'll be. Some sort of fire monster. Red bat. These are quite easy. So let's finish them nice and quickly. We can always come back in later and draw some fire magic if we want to. We don't want to waste the time now. Because we've got a dangerous boss battle against Ifrit to manage in a minute. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Onwards. Again, lovely music. Sort of intense, but not horrifying, not stressful. Draw some fire. 13 fires, good effort. Um, and there's nothing up these other spikes, I promise. I've checked before. Many times over the years. I've probably played through this game at least six or seven times. And I've never stopped just loving every minute of it. It's such fun. So, Bomb, an elemental monster. Use an ice attack for these. I haven't got any ice attacks yet, Christus. Check the monster's weaknesses with scan. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to get the bats first. Let's try and sort them out. And... Oh, hold on. There we go, that's... Yeah. We're going to get that bat. Sort you right out. And now the bombs, I think if you don't get them within three hits, they sort of grow and blow themselves up. So we need to be quite sort of strong about it. I'm not sure that's going to do the biz. Oh, maybe maybe because this is sort of early level bombs, they're not going to do that. But it's quite scary when they do. Quite an intense little mechanic where they grow and get all angry with you and then they sort of self-destruct and do an absolute ton of damage. But they, these ones don't appear to be doing that. Let's see what we can draw from there. It's just fire. All right, cool. And fire is not going to be much use to us against Ifrit because Ifrit is a fire demon and is in fact 
healed by fire magic, as far as I remember. So, if we had already been out grinding and drawing some ice magic and stuff from the monsters on the world map, we would have finished off these bombs pretty quickly, but it's taking us a moment. That's why I selected 20 minutes instead of 10. But we should still be okay. We just don't need to meet any more bombs on our way to the boss fight here. So yeah, in case you don't know already, if you haven't played this game before, the um, end of this cavern here, there's a sort of um, pool of fire from which we're going to summon a demon and we're going to defeat him in battle and get him on our team um, as a GF, a guardian force. So that's the, the point of this uh, little mission. And it's, ooh, we both leveled up, good stuff. Um, oh, and we've received a bomb card, good for us. We might win our next game, you never know. Um, yeah, so the purpose of this is we're running through the fire cavern to get to the beastie at the end to, to win him to our cause, and that proves that we're ready to take the exam later. Look, Buell, I think this one's called, looks absolutely terrifying with its two layers of rotating sort of wingy nonsense, but actually unbelievably weak monster, as I remember. Yeah, two little slaps and it <laughs> just gone. But it looks good. Like I say, this is another thing, just character design, monster design in this game is really good fun. We got almost no experience points for that. And to be honest, it's fair enough. Any small child could have knocked Buell out of the sky. Oh, right now, see, the music's changed. Quistis, I guess you were right. I guess I was right. You and Cypher are in a class of your own. You both have amazing strength and potential. She's being quite free with the encouragement, isn't she? So here we are with 14 minutes to go. Is This is it. Are you ready? Sure, why not? You seem confident enough. I probably should have used some, um, you know, potions to restore my health before this battle, but I didn't. This is another theme that you will see emerge through the weeks as we go with playing these games, is I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really think things through. I don't really do it properly. So yeah, look, Squall's only got 261. Probably gonna get decimated. Can I draw from yeah, let's draw and cast Cure on ourselves, just to begin with. That's much better. So, now, how much damage is fire going to give us back? Oh, actually more than Cure <laughs> gave us. All right, never mind. That's the thing with these battles. Oh, um, I also, I was thinking I'm going to use my GF Shiva against Ifrit because although um, it takes some time to summon and use the GF, I think it'll be worth it for the amount of damage it'll do. So we're going to get that going now. Take that, you demon. Massive horns. So now we sit and watch the animation. And I think you can set in the menu animations to be sort of short um, versions, which would have been good in this time-limited scenario. But um, fantastic, isn't it? Noises and charging up the juice. Yeah, uh, well, 198, actually not as good as I was thinking. But, you know, they have Shiva? Ah, oh, he's scared now. Maybe we'll do that again. Crack. Um, or we could, actually, we could scan. Um, 
and find out how much juice Ifrit has left. So, yeah, 663, so we need several more attacks from Shiva to get it. He uses fire magic. It's a strong opponent, but as it's part of Garden Exam, it's not impossible to defeat. Yeah, look at that. We'll be fine. Okay. What a cool looking thing. It's sort of golden bangles and whatnot. Impudent humans. <laughs> Getting cross now. Oh, 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 I didn't like the look of that. That was dangerous, wasn't it? All right, let's get Shiva on him again. He wasn't happy with that. And the good thing about summoning a GF as well is while you're summoning, they take the damage for you. So if he has a go at Squall right now, Shiva will get damaged and not Squall. Which is sort of useful. You spread out the pain. But what you can't do, I think, is heal the GFs during battle, so you, you want to be a bit careful not to lose them completely. So here we go again with Shiva. Now I can't remember, is Shiva in Hinduism the, the destroyer or the maintainer or the creator? There's Vishnu and um, Shiva and another one. I'm sorry about my ignorance. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. I would imagine the destroyer, because that's sort of all tough and scary for a you know attacking monster in a game like this, but I could be wrong. Uh, one more. Hmm, not bad for a human. Yeah. I like that he's attributing it to the humans when in fact I'm using the powerful godlike monster to try and defeat him. Very charitable of Ifrit to say, <laughs> not bad for a human. Oh dear, Quistis taking a bit of a pummeling. And it's a good thing I did choose 20 minutes instead of 10, because we've used 10 and a half already. And you need to get out as well, I think. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe the clock stops as soon as you've defeated Ifrit. Can't remember. Anyway. Maybe it's worth acknowledging one of the reasons I liked this game as an eight-year-old boy was the sort of sexy goddess thing going on there. There are a few elements of kind of clearly kind of 90s, um, well, and, and I suppose it didn't stop in the 90s, but there's sort of uh, video game sex appeal going on. For me to lose to a human, very well, I will join it. We've done it. Well done, us. We only just needed an extra 10 minutes, but good thing we took them. Because I think if you don't do it, you suffer all sorts of uh, dishonor. If it's card, that's useful too. Oh, you G Returner, that is, you can bring the Guardian forces back if they get blown up in a battle, so that's useful. Uh, GF received 20 AP, that's a lot, good. Tremendous. Uh, name the character. Ifrit will do just fine. Thank you. Confirm. Awesome. There isn't much time, but let me go over this real quick. Good, you got yourself a GF. If you junction that GF, you'll be able to use the Elemental Junction ability. Here's an explanation on elements. Right, here it goes. Junction can change basic parameters such as strength and magic, as well as elemental parameters. By junctioning a GF with elemental junction ability, as magic is junctioned, the elemental attack defense slot above HP turns white, indicating an elemental junction. When left is selected, <laughs> the elemental junction screen appears. Elemental junction works like other junctions. First select a stat, to junction, then choose a magic to finish the junction, and Fyra and Fyraga are the sort of next level powerful versions. However, non-elemental magic like Cure cannot be junctioned. No, that wouldn't make sense, would it? Elemental junction affects attack and defense differently. Junctioning to elemental attack 
links that element to a character's attack. The percentage indicates how much of the attack's damage is linked to that element. At the maximum value of 100%, the attack becomes entirely elemental. In the example, ice is at 50%. This means that damage only increases by 50%. When junction to elemental defense, the damage from that element is reduced. I think I should explain, because I don't think they explain that very well at all, but the attack, you, you don't increase the power of the attack, but you make it elemental in nature, so that if, for example, we had ice magic junctioned to our attack for this Ifrit battle, we would have been doing more damage because Ifrit is vulnerable to ice. Um, but uh, if we were fighting an ice monster of some kind, we might be damaging them not at all, or even healing them with our attacks if we have 100% elemental ice attack. So you can have like a 50% so it's a bit icy but not fully icy uh, and so on. But anyway, it doesn't actually increase the power of your attack at all. The damage from that element is reduced. Uh, this is, yeah, now defense. So you can reduce it and you can go beyond 100% with these. In the example, fire damage is reduced 20% because elemental defense is at 80%. The little green star is displayed when the value goes over 100%, indicating that damage is absorbed. So you can actually get health back from being attacked. Crazy. In this state, you can absorb that amount. Yeah. In the example, 50% of fire damage is absorbed. Multiple magic types can be junctioned to elemental defense, depending on the GF's ability. Useful. Junction multiple magic types with the same elemental for a cumulative effect. Try junctioning different magic to check the effect. I just might, you know. You can also select auto to automatically junction the most effective elemental magic. This concludes the elemental junction tutorial. Thank you very much. It's fascinating stuff. There's a lot of fire elemental monsters here, so junction blizzard to your elemental attack. You'll have an easier time with fire elemental enemies. I bet you will. So um, let's just sort out a couple of things while we're here and while the timer has stopped. Um, we're going to junction to squall the new GF Ifrit. Um, and we're also going to uh, junction some magic to strength uh, to give us some more power. And uh, we don't have anything now to junction to elemental whatever, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was um, because I forgot earlier on, was go into the Guardian Forces menu and set what abilities they're working on learning. So um, every time you do a battle, they get AP, uh, which go towards these abilities, ability points, I think they are. So um, some mag plus 10%, for example, increases the power of the attack that the Guardian Force does when they're summoned by 10%. Um, and that one's nearly learned already, so we'll let them learn that one. But the next one we're going to learn, I think, is Boost, because that's a fun little thing that every GF can learn quickly, just 10 points. And that means every time you summon them, you get a little mini game where you have to tap, uh, I think, square really quickly, and it can kind of boost the power of their attack. It's just, you know, fun little something. Um, and then you can learn all these different abilities, like junctioning to different um, stats or... Um, uh, this is um, being able to refine magic from items, which can come in handy later on. There's some magic you can only get from that kind of ability, so it's all good fun. Um, so yeah, let's set Ifrit right away to be learning this boost thing. And uh, same for Quetzalcoatl, although they'll have yeah quite a lot already going to something, so we'll let them finish learning that. Some mag plus 10%. Yeah, good. Oh, and this is a useful one as well, the card command. You can choose to, um, instead of fighting monsters in battles, you can just try and turn them into a card for the card game, which is lovely. Um, so we'll do that later on. Cool. Out we go then. We've achieved our goal here at the Fire Cavern. And look at all that lava flowing. In, in reality, if you were in a place like that, you would burn to a crisp immediately, I'm sure. That looks ridiculous, doesn't it? 
what's the walkway made of that it can just be there not melting while this absolute ocean of molten lava streams by it. It's amazing. It's almost like a fantasy world. It's like it's, it's not real. There's a bomb, but only one this time, so maybe we'll be okay. Um, should we draw some magic while we're here, just for fun? And Squall has that magic junction to his attack, so he'll get stronger. Or his strength, rather, his physical attack. So, grab a little bit of magic and move along. Just one more little round of drawing here for now. Like I said before, I'll do some grinding off screen maybe after this episode. I'll do a little bit of work on my stats before the seed exam to get us all powerful and ready to go. Because I find, to be totally honest, it's much more fun playing games like this when you can beat all the bosses quite easily. I don't want it to be too challenging. <laughs> Oh, I find I'm missing that timing on the gun blade quite often now. I need to get my eye back in. I was, I was hitting it every time when I was a kid. But I'm an old man now. 34, I think. What year is it? Yeah, I'm 34. So all my reflexes have gone. Well done, Quistis. I think the, the person that gets the last hit gets the extra experience points as well so that's nice for Quistis. Yeah look 71 to my 63. So there we go no items boo. GF's received one AP. It's all positive. Move us along. Is that draw point recharged yet? No. Nothing there. All right and just to show you I wasn't lying yeah look those are empty with nothing in them. And that's cost us one more random encounter battle. If you were bored by these kinds of things, you would find that annoying. But I'm not bored by it. It's a chance to see the lovely rotating mule again from a slightly different angle this time. I do wonder sort of anatomically how that would work. If you've got a body part that's sort of rotating freely in one direction, endlessly, it kind of logically can't actually be connected to the rest of your body. So there's some bearings involved? Is it a sort of mechanical creature? I don't know. Best not to worry too much about it. So, back we go. Yeah, lovely music. I really like this. This um, uh, it's into the battle theme again now, but that... Um, sort of fire cavern theme with the nice harp undulating. Very pretty. Bit of sort of eerie beauty to it. But the battle music's wonderful as well. The um, thought occurs to me that, because um, I've heard this particular bit of music performed by an orchestra, um, on YouTube somewhere. I'll, maybe I'll find a link and put it in the description or something, but um, there's so much music from this game and the Final Fantasy games generally being sort of recorded and performed live by orchestras now around the world. It's just so fabulous. Um, I went to a, I think it's called Distant Worlds, the organisation that puts on these orchestral concerts. I went to a Distant Worlds concert at the Royal Albert Hall in London many years ago and it was just terrific to see a load of young people essentially enjoying classical music and rocking out to this kind of stuff, dressing up and whatnot to come to these shows. Really cool. And it's not rubbish at all, this music. You know, a lot of video game music is kind of good at doing what it does, but it's sort of musically not very sophisticated, I suppose. But this really is, it's wonderful. it again, see? But yeah, you've got this battle theme in a sort of odd time signature with the sort of uh, aggressive changes of feel and 
yet you get these lovely rousing melodies and whatnot to really push you through. It's great. It's really good stuff. Maybe I'll do the music theory essay another time when I'm not trying to actually kill the monsters at the same time, but it's good stuff. Oh, one more. We're nearly out, but they're trying to drag us back in. Yeah, fabulous thing, isn't it? Oh, it's coming in for an attack. Two damage. They're really underpowered, these hopeless things. Goodbye. Oh, just knocked my microphone. Sorry about that. So, I think that should be our last encounter in the fire cavern. Didn't we do well? We completed it in the second fastest possible time, which I think was wise not to try and rush it. Uh, and we safely achieved our goal. Now we're back out and those fellas have gone off on their lunch break. So, I wonder if Quistis will have any wise remarks for us. Maybe we have to get safely back to the academy, the garden, first. Yeah, a little battle first, though. See, you can't avoid monsters forever in this game. Another bite bug. Very strange, bulbous jaws thing has. Whip crack. Just draw a little bit of this and that. It's always good to have a bit of magic. Now, let's finish them off with Squall's next attack. There we go, lovely. I like how in these kinds of games and stories there's always sort of infestation of many different types of fantastical monsters all around the world. This would not work in a real environment if the world was just totally overrun with random beasts that would attack you. But in every game like this there's some sort of justification where you know, the Council of Wizards made a grave error in the time of yore and they summoned forth the power of the beasts from the... You know, there's always some sort of explanation. I, there will be one in this game as well coming eventually. I won't spoil it for any of you who haven't played this. But imagine if this was what life was like. If every time you sort of tried to walk to school or work, you just had to dodge or defeat a load of sort of giant wasps or flying pigs or um, fiery bomb men that were trying to get you. I think that would be unsustainable to be honest. But we are being asked to suspend our disbelief and that is okay in the context of storytelling, isn't it? Oh, look, Quistis was able just for a moment there to use her limit break because she's quite low on HP. So maybe we'll do that if we encounter any more bad guys. Shiva learned some mad plus 10. So actually now we'll just set Shiva up to learn boost as we discussed. Uh, so into the menu. Uh, here we go. Shiva. Learn. Boost. There we go. So now that's what Shiva will learn. Let's just save while we're at it. Good progress we've made there. Going into the fire cavern and achieving our goal. We are now allowed to continue and that's the name of the game. In games. When I'm playing games by myself, I tend to spend an awful lot of time just sort of wandering about, exploring and grinding and learning about the world and stuff. I'm going to try not to do too much of that 
as I play through with you folks because I don't want you to have to sit through it if it's dull for you. And we do want to advance the story. It can be very slow, so let's see, says Quistus. I thought there was something else I needed to go over with you before you take the seed exam. Oh yes, taking care of your GF. This is something you have to watch out for. Oh, maybe this is what we've just been doing with learning the abilities and stuff. <coughs> A GF will level up as it gains experience, yeah. And learn new abilities by gaining AP, ability points, from EXP and AP. XP gained from battles automatically levels up the GF, while AP gained during battle can be distributed to learn different abilities. Decide how to distribute the points. Let's go over how a GF can learn different abilities. We've already done this. Thanks, game. Select GF from the menu to display blah, 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 blah. When Shiva is selected, it's good that they give you this, though. In-game, just as you go, you get to know what happens and how it works. Um, so Shiva explains its level, experience and compatibility between characters, etc by selecting learn. Yeah, compatibility is quite interesting. As you use a Guardian Force, you develop a bond with it, which means you can summon it more quickly. Shiva's ability list is displayed. Yep. Abilities in white, such as Strength Junction, are abilities already learned. While abilities in grey have not been learned yet. The first number in grey shows the AP spent towards learning. And the second number shows the AP required to complete. Vitality Junction shows that 50 AP are required, of which zero have been spent. In order to learn Elemental Attack Junction, move the cursor to Elemental Attack Junction. And confirm Elematukj. Elematukj will then be displayed to the left under Learning. From here on, all AP gained will be used for Elematukj. When all 160 AP are gained, Elamatukj is learned. Once an ability is learned, AP will automatically move to an ability not yet learned. It's good, isn't it? With each learned ability comes a different set of abilities to learn. The order of learning affects the GF's powers. Oh, that's interesting. Therefore, it is recommended to return, this, return to the screen to set the next ability. Yeah, so if you want your GF to be all about um, junctioning up your um, basic uh, attributes. You can set those and it will give you more of those. And if you want it to learn all the sort of um, uh, ones down at the bottom there, the, the magic plus 10 and all that stuff, you can have it develop different types of abilities. Cool. And I suppose the idea is you have different GFs doing different specialisms and you can build your party more powerfully more quickly. So, now change into your uniform and assemble at the first floor lobby. Change into your uniform. I will. Can we talk to Quistis as she's walking away? Meet in the first lobby after you change. Yeah, I know, but can we can we not have a little small talk? No? Okay. Never mind. She was all chatty at the fire cabin, trying to flirt and that, and now she's not interested. Never mind. So it goes. Is this draw point back? No, it's all grey still. All right. I wonder if we can get that fella at cards now that we've got Ifrit and a bomb and stuff. Picked up a couple of useful cards, didn't we? The risk is if we play him and lose, we lose our Ifrit card, and that's sort of um, a one-off card. We don't want to do that. <coughs> but maybe it's worth the risk. Excellent, Breeze. Great day for cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to play you at cards. Definitely. Right, I better concentrate now, because <laughs> if I don't, we'll be in big trouble, like I say, losing our powerful Ifrit card. But I think with the powerful Ifrit card, we should be able to win, especially also with Bomb. That's quite a good one, too. Um, and the rest of these are pretty much hopeless, but um, <laughs> what do we reckon? Maybe... Four and four, or five and three. It's hard to say. I mean, let's just give it a go. Hmm, okay, so let's start by placing our Ifrit 
somewhere where it's going to be safe. Now I notice none of his cards have got seven to the left, so we should be safe to put Ifrit here. And that should be unturnable. And we can't turn that one either, so let's put... No, we can't put the bomb up in the top left yet, because their bottom card there, I forget the name of that one, has got a seven at the top. So what we're going to do instead, I think, is place this here, because that can't be flipped. Three, three, four, five, yeah. So we should be good. And now we've got an opening. So if we want to... Oh, but we haven't got anything that can actually turn that over anyway. Oh, no. We're not doing so well here so far, are we? Um, all right, so now what we've got to do, I guess, is put this here so that it's safe and we aren't going to get done. And we have to hope that this fella makes an error. You see, I would normally think that was an error, but we haven't got anything that can turn it. Now, what's going to happen here is <laughs> he's going to save his seven until last and get our bomb if we put it up in the top there. So, thinking about it, we've got to be very careful here, haven't we? We're playing next and then they're playing. So, okay, so what we need to do is place this rubbish Gesper card somewhere that will force something I think we're destined to draw here, aren't we? All right, but if we put this there, then he'll put the good one middle right, and then... Oh, well, I suppose that doesn't make any difference. Fine. And we draw. Uh, at least we didn't lose. Oh, I had to work so hard there. Like I said in the previous episode, I'm not really very good at concentrating on card games and stuff, but... I really tried quite hard there. Um, I don't think I dare risk it again just now. Maybe we'll collect a few more good cards and um, we'll win our first game later. Hello, gate person. What have you got to say today? Oh, the same as before. Every single year you get troublemakers entering. How I enjoy scolding them. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder if you can... Um, play cards with this fellow. Again, if I challenge him and he's really good, then I might lose my Ifrit card. I think I'm going to hold off on cards for the time being. Until I feel a bit more confident. So, here we are. Let's save game. By accessing the menu. I must say, I'm having a lovely time, are you? very relaxing to just take your time playing an old game, isn't it? Morning. Good luck with the seed exam. Thanks very much. I heard they even listen in on your conversations during the seed exam. Goodness. Um, shall we use the directory to jump straight to the dorms? No, let's go for a little wander around the holes. So this is Balam Garden, our home and academy. It's the library. There's some little kid here. I'm going to be a seed. I'll work really hard. Yeah, there's something sort of really unsettling about the reality of this world, which is that kids of pretty much all ages are in this essentially military academy training for who knows what war. But such is the reality of existence. There is danger and peril in all walks of life. Car Park. This kid's quite fun. I remember that kid being a, a game, a card player as well. Come on, take the pain. One more. <laughs> Training, running laps. What do these folks have to say for themselves? Nothing. Some of these characters are just, like, visual only. <laughs> They're just part of the background. That one too. Okay, here we are at the dormitory. Let's follow up this spoke of the wheel and see where we get to. We're going to go and change into our uniform. 
lovely footstep noises again. Quite unsophisticated, but I like them anyway. The same noise when you're just walking around in your room as when you're running up and down the corridor. So, um, is there anything on the desk here that we can look at? Nah. Shall we go into the rooms? I think one of them is ours. I don't think it's this one. I think this is our roommate's room. Yeah. And there's nothing you can interact with. This is another thing that I've really noticed about games of a certain vintage is nowadays, you know, everything in a game is, you know, interactable, more or less. But in this sort of a game, you really, you get a few little things here and there, but basically you are just looking at painted backgrounds. Um, so, uniform, get changed. Yes, let's do that. Oh, very striking. It's sort of a little bit of a blue colour in that, and a badge on the elbow there. There's a sort of gun blade case, which is quite nice. And, yeah, can we have a little rest? I think this restores our health, so let's do that. And there's no sort of in-game time, really. So we're not going to, you know, miss our appointment if we do that. Save the game again, because we can. So another thing is, you can save pretty much anywhere, anytime in a lot of modern games. But in this and many older games, you could only save at certain save points. I wonder why. Is that a sort of um, technical limitation that it just isn't possible to sort of generate the game from literally any moment or any point, perhaps that's it. I wonder how many are going to pass the C exam, but that written test sure was hard. Oh, at least you made it to the written part. I still haven't finished all my credits yet. I know, I have a lot left too. It'd be nice if we could all take it together. Yeah, even cooler if all three of us pass. So there's a bit of like um, establishing the camaraderie of the uh, school here, but also telling us how difficult it is to get into this seed organisation. So nice little bit of uh, background character exposition for us there. I like the way these stories are built and put together. It's interesting to consider the way that you get the story delivered to you. Quistis, Squall, over here. Here he is. I'll be announcing the squad assignments for the exam now. Let's see. You'll be with Zell Dinked. Quite a lively fellow. Lively. He's just loud. Can't I switch members? Zell's reputation preceding him. I'm afraid that's not possible. Over here, Zell. Here he is. What a guy. <laughs> Fantastic. Imagine someone actually doing that in real life. You're just being introduced to someone and they're like, hold on, I'll just do my moves. And then a big grin and a thumbs up. Whoa, I'm with you. Zell seems pleased. Squall, not so much. See, a bit, bit douchey, Squall. Not a very sort of friendly fella. Um, not vivacious in any case. Zell's limit break settings can be also be changed in the status screen. Uh, yeah, oh, he does, yeah, moves where you have to enter the things like a fighter game and beat him up. If dual auto is turned on, the limit break duel will execute automatically. The limit break moves listed on the screen are selected randomly. That's all for Zell's limit break. Yeah, so you get shown these, you know, combinations and you can put them in as if you're playing um, Street Fighter or Tekken or whatever. It's good fun. Do they make games like that anymore? It's just um, Super Smash Bros kind of finished that, didn't they? They were like, okay, that's the end of story with that one. No point trying to make any newer ones because that's just one it. You don't get along with Cypher, do you? Asked Zell. Heard he whooped you pretty bad this morning. We weren't fighting, we were training. Squall, absolutely no sense of humour. I bet you he doesn't think so, says Zell. Look, Cypher's just being a pain in the ass. All you have to do is ignore him. 
that's none of your business. None of your business, Quistis, inserting herself again. It's completely inappropriate from a teacher. Um, ahem, excuse me, but that cipher you're talking about, he's your squad leader. Oh no, bad luck that, wasn't it? Say what? says Zell. It can't be changed, says Quistis. Cypher, are you here? Oh, there he is, looming menacingly with his couple of goons in the background. It's my tummy rumbling. Fujin and Raijin tagging along as usual. Guess that makes up the whole disciplinary committee. You're the squad leader. Good luck to you. Instructor, says Cypher. I wonder why the music's gone away. Is that because Cypher ruins the mood wherever he goes? I hate it when people wish me luck. Yeah, it's an interesting little contrast because Squall is grumpy and antisocial, but Cypher's like actively a jerk. Save those words for a bad student that needs them, eh? Just what a tool. Okay then, says Quistis. Good luck, Cypher. Oh, sick burn, Quistis. That is strong stuff. He wasn't ready for that. Furious. Add instructor trap to the list. <laughs> the list? What is it? <laughs> it's great stuff. Well then, says Quistis, you're all assigned to squad B. I'll be the instructor in charge. Teamwork is of the utmost importance. And that's why we've put these people together who we already know hate each other. Let's get through this exam, everyone. Listen up. Teamwork means staying out of my way. <laughs> it's a squad B rule. Don't you forget it. And Zell, like, squaring up to him, fuming. Look at him. Little pumpy fists. Absolutely furious. Headmaster Sid says, everyone here? Here he comes. Oh, and his theme music. I really like this theme music. Nice waistcoat as well. It's been a while, everyone. How's everyone doing? This exam will involve 12 members from squads A through D. You will be proceeding to a real battlefield. Obviously, the battles are for real. This is absolutely wild, by the way. If you have, like, a test for student soldiers, I really don't think you send them to a real, like, war zone and have them have real battles with real professional soldiers, but that's what they're literally about to do, is send students into a war zone. Hilarious. Life and death, victory and defeat, honour and disgrace, each of these go hand in hand. There's only one way or the other. Incredible. How about it? You still up for it? Yes, Headmaster Sid, we really look forward to it. Sounds awesome. You will be accompanied by nine seed members. I suppose that's at least something. They are sending some pros. Should you fail, these members shall get the job done. They always do. Well, that's one less worry on your mind. The pride of Balam Garden, the elite mercenary force seed. Learn from them, obey their commands, and accomplish the mission. Prove yourself worthy of becoming a member of seed. Nice little animation that they've just repeated there. Best of luck. Yeah, his sort of um, inspecting the troops animation, leaning forward and having a good look. Makes me feel ready. <laughs> Footsteps, man. All right, let's say hi to Sid. Quistis, let's get a move on. Well, I, I didn't want to talk to you, Quistis. Oh, so fiddly. Oh, Sid says, we've yet to have a gunblade specialist in Seed. That is why I'm hoping you and Cypher will join us in Seed. Yeah, I guess. Um, does Sid play cards? I think he does, but we'll do that later as well. I'm not sure you can play at this point, and I don't want to risk trying. Let's get a move on. Okay, right, well, let's get a move on then. 
as they say. I think I'm going to find an opportunity to save the game and we'll actually do this in the next episode, but um, we're going to get close to the start of our exam mission, I think. So we're driving off in the big yellow taxi. Paved paradise to put up a parking lot and all that. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Yo, Squall, show me a gun blade, will you? <laughs> nope. Come on, man. Nope. <laughs> just a peek. Squall just playing it cool. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Why are you being so selfish? Scrooge. <laughs> I don't know what the Scrooge has got to do with it. Squall just says nothing. Say something, will you? What's on your mind? Nothing. Quistis again. Getting involved. Giggling. I bet that doesn't help Squall feel comfortable and supported. So Zell's just going to get up and swing fists around inside a cramped cabin. I'm going to press buttons. No, nothing's happening. I have to wait for that. Stop that. It's annoying, says Cypher. He's right, to be honest. Chicken. We... You set him up, Cypher. What did you call me? Says Zell. <laughs> Cypher's loving it. Knock it off, says Quistis. Yeah. I mean, this is um, real high school behaviour, but to be fair, they're teenagers and you're trying to put them in the military. Very difficult to get people to find the discipline, isn't it? Instructor, says Squall. Who was that girl in the infirmary this morning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mystery girl. Was someone there? I didn't notice anybody. Is there a problem? No, not really. Cypher, this is great. I have chicken wuss and a guy who just reached puberty in my squad. <laughs> Zell absolutely livid in the background. Disproportionately angry, I think. I don't think you should let him get to you, Zell. Take it easy. How to drive. Back, forward, get on, off. Um, yeah, I think what I'm actually going to do is... Um, oh, look, left stick, right stick. I, so this is, like, um, dual shock compatible. You could get the... Um, bigger controllers with uh, the analog sticks on them by this point, but I didn't have them at the time, so I'm not going to play with them now. So, um, forward, 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 we drive along the little road to try and get there. We could get out and do some battles if we want to. Let's just hop out and do a battle or two. Oh, shouldn't we get... Oh, okay, it won't let me. Never mind then. I was going to, like, equip all our um, stuff and get battling, but never mind. We'll do that in the next ep. What I'm going to do is, um, oh no, I can't even access the menu to, oh well okay, I'll just drive on through into Balam then. I was going to get out and save the game on the world map so that we could uh, take a pause at this point and come back next time, but I guess we'll proceed a little longer. Lucky us. Bonus content. So driving into the town of Balam. And later, when we come back here, I think, we get some really lovely, um, completely realistic acoustic guitar music, nylon guitar music. But not right now, because we're just driving through. We get the sound of our engine. Oh, and squeaky tyres too. Fantastic. Some nice seaside noises, gulls and whatnot. So that's the vessel. Ain't no turning back now. Huh? You scared too? Hey, you guys are the last. Hurry up and get in. Okay. Don't disappoint me now. 
Quistis. Come on, move it. Okay. Hurry, Squall. Is this... It's just going to give me an opportunity to sort out my menu and stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, so Squall is the only one in the party at the moment, so we don't need to junction anything to anyone yet. Let's talk to this fella. Get aboard now. All right, I will. Thank you for your cooperation in this matter. Where do you think you're going? Well, nowhere particular. I'm just saying hi. Quistis. To the vessel, now! So, the problem team, Squad B. Guess it can't be helped with a rookie instructor. Oh, interesting. So we're, all, we're known as the problem team. And Quistis is a rookie instructor. Um, that is information we did not yet know, but she is viewed as a rookie, and we are viewed as a problem already. We haven't even started. Oh dear. Well, I hope it doesn't go badly for any reason. These are some of the hottest graphics in the game, the world map stuff. It's really quite economical. So yeah, that was a sort of mountain top appearing in the distance. We're going to travel across the water to some nearby destination and perform a mission. Sue says, hi Quistis. Well, these are the members of Squad B. Nice to meet ya. Pleased to meet you. And Cypher's not even got up. Zoo. Cypher, how many times has it been now? Oh, I just love these exams, so he's failed in the past. I'll explain the current situation and the mission. Be seated. Our client for this mission is the Dollet Dukedom Parliament. A request for seed was made 18 hours ago. Dollet has been under attack by the G Army since about 72 hours ago. 49 hours into the battle, Dollet abandoned their position in the inner city. Currently they have retreated into the nearby mountains and are reorganising their troops. That's the current status. Now on to the mission objective. According to our reports, the G Army is mopping up the Dollet troops in the mountain region. We're to make a landing at Lapin Beach. We're to eliminate the remaining G Army within the city and liberate it ASAP as possible. Afterwards, Seed members will intercept any G Army forces trying to make their way into the city from the mountain region. So we're going to liberate a little fishing town from the G army invading. So what are we supposed to do? Asks petulant Cypher. Seed candidates are to eliminate the G army inside the city. Sounds important, says Zell. Sounds boring, says Cypher. So what you're saying is we do all the dirty work. Oh, it hardly needs to be said, but the order to withdraw takes priority. Do not forget. We're almost there. We anticipate a battle as soon as we disembark. Just be prepared. That's all. Any questions? Talk to Quistis. Okay. A bit of urban warfare for us. So, we've got some options seems like Squall would do nothing based on previous interactions, but let's take the opportunity to talk to Quistis. Explain that again. Here's a quick explanation. The goal for this mission is to eliminate the Galbadian forces that have entered Dollet. The order to withdraw takes priority. Be sure to make your way back to the shore when you get this order. Feels like the game's told us that twice. It feels like that's going to come up. Hmm. Talk to Cypher. Listen up. 
Our goal for this mission is to mop up all the Galbadian soldiers still left in Dolit. All you boys have to do is take orders from me, the captain. Amazingly douchey, Cypher. Talk to Zell. My first real battle. I'm getting pretty nervous. Better not piss in your pants. Ha! You talking to me? <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Okay, enough talk, says Christus. Very childish behaviour by those two. We'll be landing pretty soon. Get ready. Feels like it's not a group dynamic that's going to end positively. Uh, Roger, says Zell. All right, says Squall. Yeah, yeah, says Cypher. Attitude. Well then, Squall, go see what's going on outside. I wonder what happens if we just say no. This is an order from your captain, Squall. Now go outside. Okay. Uh, where is outside? Is it down or up? <laughs> Just really fiddly, this game. Where is outside? Honestly. Oh, it's to the right. There we go. Problem solved. Huge success. And now, as I remember, we get a lovely little cinematic... Very artsy. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice design, sort of futuristic, but um, kind of. Uh, techno vibe as well it's like it's a bit old school and rough but lots of um, doodads and whatnot so there we go there's the real thing warfare in front of your eyes school this is no longer training it's business Yeah, just going to smash straight through the sea wall there. It seems like that was unnecessary. <laughs> There's a nice harbour opening right there, but okay. And open the front of the boat, and here we are. Again, nice little seamless transition from the cinematic into the gameplay. Okay, says Christie's, you are to secure the central square. Be sure to equip your GF before you head into battle. Yeah, let's do that right away. Let's move out, says Cypher. Well, he's just running off. I haven't had a chance to equip my GF yet. Junction. Squall. Junction. GF. I'm going to take Ifrit off and give him to Zell. Um, and all the rest of this, I think, can stay as it is. Um, junction. Zell. Ifrit. And that means that Zell can have some magic on strength if I give him some magic. Um, let's give him a GF draw and item. And let's junction Cypher with Quetzalcoatl. Junction to Quistis. How do I unjunction then? Have to go over to Quistis outside the party, I see. Uh, no, sorry, not Zell sort of trying to rush because the heat of battle has got me all excited but um, I actually don't need to rush at all. Uh, he hasn't got any magic either. Good. So um, abilities. Uh, we're going to do magic, GF and draw. Generally I think only one person in the party needs item but actually maybe one, mm, I don't know, we'll see as we go. Um, so yeah, let's take all the magic off Quistis. Um, select member to receive magic. Uh, let's give all of Quistis's magic to Zell, right? and then we'll uh, give some thunder to Cypher, since he's got Quetzalcoatl, which is like a thunder magic dude. And that'll probably do for now, won't it? Uh, cool. So we're all set. Um, can we go back and say hi to Quistis, or is she inaccessible at this point? Yeah, I think 
Yeah, okay, are you, you are to secure the central square. Yeah, okay, let's go. Following Cypher, who's run off in this direction. So, the seed exam begins. Squad A is in charge here, leave it to us. So, like, where are all the enemies? Hey, no small talk, remember? I don't want points deducted, so don't talk to me. Oh, maybe we shouldn't be talking to people and wasting our time. We might lose points. So, here's a save point. I think we're going to stop here for the time being, and in the next episode, we're going to do the mission and hopefully get accepted to seed Balam Garden's mercenary organisation. Uh, but for now, thanks very much for watching. It's been a fun time, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Let's save and see you again next time. Don't forget to say hi in the comments and uh, tell me your reminiscences of this game and others if you like. Uh, yeah, speak to you soon. Bye then.